gimmick to, to try and pick apart. Let's see if the newcomers will be able to take down the veterans. Rutgers University taking on RIT. Gentlemen, let's rock. And we do kick things off. It starts with Mimic around midfield, but Lukey is there, and he's passed another defender. Sunblaze, plenty of time to come back, and a back pass to move it back down to the blue half here for Rochester. And pulled out. That shot is just blocked there by Flexmo. And Sunblaze up high for this off the backboard. Can't find the second touch. Another shot blocked off the double commit. Ooh. Quick Boy going to pick this up slowly and head the other way. Really nice job from Sunblaze, though, on the rotate back. It was going to be a tough two-on-one situation for the Tigers, but Rutgers still trying to figure out a way out of their own half. Mimic trying to close the distance, and they will be able to get it stuck in the midfield here for a little bit. And White Park doing what he can to move down the pitch here. Almost got a second touch onto the ball. Got Lukey now, he's got Quick Boy on the wing. Gonna look for him. Sunblaze tried to cut that one off, but awkward angle as it falls down to the side, and Flexmo picks up another one. Quick Boy on the other end here of the arch half. Rutgers starting to put together a consistent presence in the orange half here, but a good challenge in midfield allows RIT to move down the pitch. And Rochester are doing a nice job. They are having to make a lot of these challenges with not a lot of boost, so it's good for them to not get beat. However, it is struggling right now for the Tigers to get something going on offense and really get it to stick. And they're really leaping for these plays where you have one player, he's either you know, on the wing, he goes for the pass up. It's kind of just, all right, I'm popping this up, and you go for it. Every one of them have been met by a challenge so far. That one sent the other way. Sunblaze has to buy some time for his team. Quick boy on the one challenge. Lukey can't get there in time. Flexmo forced up real quick. He does make the touch in midfield. Oh, oh and a, a great touch from Lukey, but better save by White Park. Flipping back quickly. I can understand why Barb made that. I actually played <laughs> Rival Series qualifiers one time with that guy. He's a cool dude. <laughs> How'd that go? You know, we made top 128, oh. and then we didn't go any further. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good time. That's a good time. Uh, quick boy. Trying to move out again now for RIT. They're starting to put together some presence here. Pass back to the side from White Bark. He has a nice touch to get by one, but the rest of Rochester forced to retreat. Mimic, he's got a full tank, moving down the pitch, Ooh. carrying it around the dribble, the control, the shot is available, but the angle cut off by Rutgers. That follow-up not there, and Lukey with a demo back the other way. Open net for the Scarlet Knights, and Flexmo going to score the first one of the Eastern Conference. You called it. That was a good idea on the other side by Mimic to try to control in the corner and try to force the play, but both players on Rochester were in the exact same spot for that. Somebody's got to be able to clear the option, otherwise you have an example right there where the demo just kills all momentum. Two and a half minutes, I was really looking forward to see what team would start to establish some aggression and really assert themselves. And that goal, while it was nice from Rutgers, I don't know if that checkbox has been exactly hit for me. It just felt like RIT just kind of gave that goal away more than it was like necessarily scored by Rutgers. Yeah, I mean, Rutgers currently, they're able to hold most of the pressure. White Park to equalize, kicks it off the bar in Rochester. It's probably the first time they've really caught Rutgers out of position. Yeah, Sunblaze just makes a great touch. The challenge in midfield was all his, and then it's just up to White Park to follow it up, who is already in place for that ball. So on the transition for Rochester, and they're able to tie it up. You can see the voice comms too. White Park like yanks the e-break. He's like, oh, I can just cut back and go for the first goal for the team. Not bad. All right. All right, see, I see you out here making these plays. And while Rochester did score the first goal, for the most part, they've really struggled to hang on to this ball past the midfield line. The Scarlet Knight is doing a great job in general holding possession. Of course, that time came back to bite him, and this might be able to get it, but there's Lukey as well. And he lost control. Mimic. I'm going to try to carry that one out back over to Quick Boy. A nice pass back to Flexmo, but Flexmo, knowing that that ball was going to be challenged, did not want to waste the rest of his boost in the tank. RIT up high for here for White Bark. He wins the challenge, but that touch out to the side going to kill any chance Sunblaze had at the net. And Sunblaze also just, you know, four minutes in is the only time we've really gotten a chance to see him as Flexmo misses one wide. Luki trying to get away the mimic and also a nice deny of that corner boost could make it tough here for the Tigers to break out. Kick to the top of the box and a nice save from Mimic. Cool. And not the best touch going the other way, but Sunblaze able to get the midfield boost away from Quick Boy and got in the way. That affords Rochester to move back down the field. Flexmo forced out to the corner. It's not the best touch, but a quick follow-up from Lu or Luki, excuse me, 
gets him out of harm's way. 45 seconds left. Both teams vying for that, ooh, <laughs> that uh, game-leading goal, if you will. That is a clean win for Quick Boy. No. He gets another win right there for the save is Mimic. He's over one, Quick Boy. And luck, or excuse me, Luki again follows it up. Flexmo, no good there. Some good defense here by Rochester, but they got to get this clear out. No touch. They needed to find the touch there. Quick Boy can't find it. Luki can't get there either. Boom, downfield. Boom, downfield. They needed that. If they want to have a chance, this one's actually open. Mimic and Sunblaze collide at the top of the box. White Mark to follow up kicks it high as well. And a squandered opportunity to steal game number one for the Tigers. Might be the last chance opportunity back the other way. Overtime looming. And Mimic clears to the midfield line. And it, we will indeed make our way to OT. Really want to see RIT fix these double commits on offense. That was a goal for them. That This should be heading into game number two right now. Oh, and a slowdown by Quick Boy almost on the kickoff. Knocked away by Sunblaze. White Bark was looking and Mimic forced to get the touch out on the ball. Quick Boy carrying this. He's got no boost left. Has to rely on Luki, but it's boomed away by Sunblaze. Off the corner, Sunblaze can't find it. Challenge again by Flexmo. This Rutgers team has done a great job of just finding good, the small touches. The small touches that have afforded them maybe a single opportunity where an opportunity wouldn't have been had anyway. Or it's won them boost in the midfield or the attacking corner. Really, Rutgers has been playing well as far as, you know, your, your textbook style, your foundational there Rocket League goes off the back wall. And Quick Boy able to take the first game here for Rutgers. And I wonder if this is actually a result of stealing with that boost. It is indeed. If White Park was able to get that corner boost, he'd be able to go up the sidewall and stick with this one. But he had faith in his teammate to go and get it. He went back to go to the other corner and pick up that boost. And his teammate just got beat. And like you said, quick boy delivering. Out of, out of game number one, you know, we, we saw a level of competency demonstrated from both of these teams. But, but I again would echo the idea that I want to see one of these teams really break out, establish some form of aggression, really look to make plays. We saw quick boys show up a couple of times throughout the course of the game and then right there to close out overtime, obviously. But when you see the level of speed we've seen out of the south region, out of the west region, you want to see that kind of thing match. It's like, yeah, this is your warm up. This is kind of how you get into the overall series. But you got to pick up the pace, I feel. I, I want to see a team start to challenge more. We haven't seen a lot of challenging at midfield. I just, I just want to see more aggressive play from both teams. Well, the Tigers, I feel like, despite, I think they are losing the boost battle currently on the pitch. Like, uh, they're definitely losing away a couple of their corner boosts every now and mm -hmm. again. But they are doing a nice job at least limiting a lot of the scary changes that Rutgers have got. So. While I agree that definitely the speed needs to come up for Rochester, the first thing is, you know, we talked about it a lot last week. Resources. <laughs> Gotta have it. I want to see some more communication out of RIT, too. We saw the, the goal that they got with White Bark turning back towards the ball. Game number two. Let's see if they can even up the score in this best of five. And as I was mentioning at the end of the last game, I really liked what I saw from Rutgers in terms of team play, really finding each other in space where RIT were struggling to make those challenges in places other than the midfield, especially in their own end. They've struggled to clear the ball really for the majority of the game. You felt like Sands the couple of opportunities that they had about midway through the game, but it was a free pick here for Mimic, and he scores first for RIT. And a really nice one as well on transition. Luki thinks he has time to pick up the corner boost and just misses the touch. And I still think he could have actually saved that if his pathing back to the net was a little more direct. But I think he wanted, I, you can understand the thought process is he wants to get even with the line so he can come across and clear it out. But just well-placed ball from Mimic. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunistic positioning of Mimic there. And, you know, you see that ball bounce off the sidewall. The, the touch is pretty much going to be there most, more often than not. But if it's not, Mimic's like, well, 13% of the time, I'm getting a goal every time. Same really was thing. the most questionable touch by Mimic. He had free reign in the midfield and he gave up possession and a shot on net that looked like it was going to be a goal. Flexmo carrying this as far as he can. He lost control about halfway through that progression. That's straight down. The demo opens it up, but Luki closes the door. White Park just trying to zone out the defense for some blaze to come in. RIT looking for that second goal, but on the transition, here come Rutgers. Here they come, but 
the attack is definitely stretched a little bit thin. It's just trying to force a few challenges. Mimic has everybody beat. Not the cleanest touch forward. Free ball from Flexmo. White Park to continue down the middle and into the middle of the net. The Tigers extend the lead. And you saw it on your screen in the corner, trying to avoid a demo while trying to go pick up boost. Slowed his speed down. No chance of trying to save that ball. If that, if he doesn't even try to go for that demo, that ball's safe, no question. I, I was wondering when we would start to see more aggression out of these teams. Game one's more and more starting to feel like a feeling out phase for both of these teams. Finding those, some of those opportunities, those interruptions, challenging passes back towards center. White Park showing you know, has, he knows how to get on the board. You wanted the speed, Halorin. I did. feel like you got it. Is this it, Chief? I'm getting it. It's starting to feel like it, Chief. <laughs> see if they keep it up. Yeah, both of these teams really starting to, especially for RIT, they've just been so close together on a lot of these sequences. And it hasn't, Haloran, you talk about opportunistic positioning. Well, this is over, overly op opportunistic for RIT. <laughs> they are going to try to move down the pitch here. Two minutes in, they do have the two goal lead. So maybe I'm being a little too harsh on the boys over at RIT. But either way, Rutgers still looking for a way into this game. And now definitely in this game number two, the Tigers, the ones controlling the midfield boost and making it tough for the Scarlet Knights to break out. A welcome clear, flex mode to continue, and Sunblaze got right in his face and did not let him get the cleanest touch on that. White Park through the midfield line, Luki the first one there, and back into the neutral game. Everybody gonna reset here as we battle it out in the corner. That first touch was tough. Oh, Double what? commit that ends up, look, it looked like a pinch, a light pinch, but it got him down <laughs> the field. Nick Mimic bumped his teammate and just <laughs> kicked the ball on the field. But a free ball here for the Scarlet Knights as they advance up the midfield line. Nobody goes for Sunblaze. Pass across, and Luki has to wait for the bounce. Follow through, not gone into the net, just missing the touch. And Sunblaze, solid touch out to the other side of the pitch. And again, that's one Rutgers you want back. You had the shot on net. You couldn't even get it registered. Couldn't find a touch onto the ball. That's a huge double commit. Picked up off the crossbar by Flexmo. Still trying to clear it out. Can't do it. Quick boy forced back. Rutgers come away empty. That would have been the time you needed one because two minutes to only score one goal, you felt like you could have got right back in it, almost stealing one as White Park off the sidewall, Sunblaze off the back, and just to clear, Mimic to keep the pressure going. Mimic as well has just been phenomenal, always getting right in the faces of the Scarlet Knights, not letting them get any challenge for free. It's been a real nuisance for them so far. And it's a great, a great change up for this RIT team from game number one, making good challenges in the midfield, and the boost battle has heavily swung in their direction and also a little oh. bit of ooh, yeah a little bit of that <laughs> almost Another. at the top of the box that one up high blocked for now but mimic's got free reign for this ball puts a shot to that top corner forces two up on the defense white park and he can't get there in time for quick boy a little slow for white park some blaze to continue though and flexmo and lukey you're not sure how much boost they have, so they'll just kick it upfield to Quick Boy. The soft redirect, not the strongest, but it's actually a pass across. And unfortunately, still, Rutgers turned to side of the line. White Park able to keep that one out and Sunblaze to clear as we find ourselves in the final minute of game two. Oh, and couldn't find the touch. Flexmo forced to try to make a save up high. Sunblaze knocks it straight down, trying to get into the way was Mimic. White Park now going to keep this in play, just killing more time off the clock here for Rochester IT. Oh. That one is White Bark, looking maybe for Mimic, but forced up now. A suck plays off the crossbar, played right into Flex Mo. Flying in are just a bunch of orange cars. Somehow this ball has stayed, double commits. has stayed out of the net, even with both double commits on both the orange and blue sides of the pitch. But with about 15 seconds left, you're down by two. Rutgers may be looking at a tie series. Yeah, as far as you're concerned, if you're the Tigers, going into game number three, there's only one thing you need to fix, and it's the shot accuracy, because, boy, did you put the pressure on Rutgers in game number two. You really never felt like they lit up the gas. There was maybe, what, two solid shots on target for the Scarlet Knights that game? Yeah. There wasn't really too much. That was kind of all RIT. No, absolutely, and it was, again, I, I, at the beginning of game two, I was talking about how I really liked how luck, uh, Rutgers, they were finding each other in space, and maybe a big reason for that is because of the resource game, because at in this all of game two, all I saw was all, all I saw was Rochester IT taking every single boost on the field at every turn in, in the big moments that mattered.
It, it's something that I noticed too. RIT definitely seems to have come alive over the course of game number two. White Bark in particularly impressed me because time and time again, we would see him start to challenge the ball. That's something that was missing from both their offense and defense. Rutgers has a lot to really work on if they want to try to match that level of aggression and turn things around. One of the liabilities I'm a I am concerned about for RIT, though, is their communication. You guys were pointing out the double commits over the course of the game on the side of both teams, but it definitely seemed to stall a lot of the efforts for RIT in particular. They could have easily had four goals there if they could just get on the same page. On the other side, though, Jorby, what do you think Rutgers needs to do to jump back into the series? Because it feels like they've fallen behind quite a bit in momentum. Yeah, it's cleaning up on the double commits, and it's also challenging the ball in your own half. There seems to be not only miscommunication on the double commits, but also miscommunication on anybody going for the ball <laughs> at any point for Rutgers. They've been slow to it, so you just want to see him pick up the pace and be much more rotationally disciplined. Going into game number three, can Rutgers turn things around? RNC looking for the early goal out of the gate. Oh, nice defense there, stops beat. that, but Quick Boy goes in. Cannot use the boost to get on to that first goal. What? It gets saved by Mimic, wow. How did that get kicked off the post? I guess he just couldn't catch the ball fast enough. Yeah. Unfortunate. It, it bounced like straight right down into him. Don't know what exactly is going through his mind at the time. I mean, there was also a bunch of cars in that direct area. So maybe tough to exactly read what was going on in the play. But even still, Rutgers almost got themselves in trouble at the end of that play. Everybody is far up past the attacking third. You cannot have all three of your players past the attacking third. Yes. Unless you want to get scored on. Oh, quick pass to Luki. He finds the goal for Rutgers. What a play. You can see it all coming down. White Park, it's not the worst clear, but Luki's just right there for it. Out to Quick Boy and once more on target. Luki just makes sure because required. Mimic was indeed there. So a beautiful one, two, three for Rutgers. That was the best coordination and synergy we've seen out of this entire series. That was one of the first times it really felt like Rutgers was like, all right, I'm passing to you. Make this shot. This is the play as we've drafted it up. Goal number one in game three goes to Rutgers. And it really is just a product of Luki being in the right place, just reading where that ball can be cleared to. And he makes a quality touch to his teammate, and he hands it right back to him. Well done. And Rutgers trying to get aggressive here. White Park wanted to go up for that. Again, miscommunication on the RIT side. The double commit in midfield. Or is the ball high off the corner? Flexmo. Back over to Quick Boy, but it is boomed back downfield again. Flexmo caught out and against Luki. Back over to Flexmo. Why? It's high up in the air there and achieves. You're questioning it. Well. They had everybody from the Tigers beat, and then he just tipped the ball away from his teammate who could have just put it in the net. <laughs> Why? So, sometimes you, you get a little too tricksy because you, you just want to try to fool the defense as much as possible that you end up just fooling your own team. Sometimes Occam's razor is in effect, right? The, the most simple shot is sometimes the correct shot. It is shot. always the hardest one. <laughs> it is absolutely the hardest oh, one. It gets past off the whip. Quick boy scoring a second one for Rutgers. Just a nice pressure here. Flexmo finally able to beat Mimic, who's been such a problem. And Sunblaze just trying to buy a little bit of time. But honestly, just unfortunate because White Park was right there in the net. If White Park can take that, he probably keeps it on his car, goes up the sidewall, keeps it close. But Sunblaze just, I mean, he didn't make a bad play. It's just the other team was right there to punish it. It was a great play by Flexmo, too, just to be able to challenge that return back towards the pitch to bounce it off the wall, set up the second goal for the team. When you go for these clears against a team like Rutgers, we're starting to see you got to make sure it gets at least the center field. That actually probably has been the biggest problem for Rochester. Whenever they're on defense, is the clear game as it results in another one here. Flexmo and Mimic just punished Luki as well. Again, we talked about that earlier. He said he's in the right place at the right time, understanding where the ball can be cleared to, throws another one off the back ball, and who else? Flexmo comes and slams it in. Seeing RNT start to collapse under some of this pressure. Rutgers definitely developed a taste for offense. They're moving to the opposite side of the field and making magic happen. And for RIT, well, I feel like Whoa. an orange player hasn't, they're allergic to the ball right now. Can't find it in Rutgers. They are a ball magnet. Quick boy. Still mimic. Just in their face all the time and actually let that one go. We'll see I don't how think that plays out. I don't think he had the boost to be able to get up to it. I think he realized that last second it would have been tough to get to, but you can always try. White Park also out of boost. And two players caught in the corner here for RIT. Dangerous territory. Luki undercut the angle. A devil on the backside keeps things open. A fourth goal will for sure put this just in clamp territory. <laughs> Thought that was it right there. He, yep. he was definitely aiming for the spot in the lower corner. You saw both of the Tigers stuck in the middle and far side of the net. But right now, Rutgers aren't even really winning the boost game. It's 
It's just like you said, Halloran, it's the quality challenges on wow. the weak clears and stopped on the line. Sunblaze just able to get in front of it, but Mimic right now really cherry picking, has to make a tough save. Ooh, come off this back wall, there's Flexmo and White Bark to delay. Luki keeping the pressure up, kicks off the bar and in. The lead goes to four, the Scarlet Knights cruising. They're just faster than the ball at every single turn here. Mimic was in a tough spot to try to make that save. He had to use everything in the tank just to get a touch onto the ball. But way before that, it started way before that in the corner with Quick Boy, who went over two defenders into the corner, which set all of that up. I like how I said really cherry picking when he's at the top of his own box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like okay. you're, you're it's out of okay. position and you're right next to the net. <laughs> <laughs> but for, uh, excuse me, for RIT, that shot just off the crossbar. They'd like at least a goal to be able to send home about heading into game number four. That shot Ooh. is going to be saved by Flexmo. Popped up high again. Mimic can't get there in time. Sunblaze tries to keep that one in play. And again, it's been less the boost game, more just other factors in, in really aggressive positioning that Rutgers have just taken advantage of off the whiffs that have happened from RIT. They haven't really been able to have a lot of success just really finding solid contact onto the ball. So if you're RIT heading into game number four, you're just trying to find touches like that and consistently, and you'll be able to defend that net. Nice bump from Sunblaze there just to try and push the Scarlet Knights off the ball. And that's definitely something that Sunblaze has really stuck out in my head since game number one has really been the the dedication to the the possession of the ball sure it hasn't gone their way in this game number three but it feels like every time he's going forward he's trying to keep it close trying to demo people trying to back pass it trying to get opportunities for his teammates to do things so it's a good look for him kick straight down again sunblaze able to boom it away with about 10 seconds left rit going back to the drawing board I'm gonna try to figure out how to force this to game number five. On the other side of the table, Rutgers take an emphatic game three victory and take this series to match point. The first team that truly takes their gloves off, I feel is going to win this series. I just think we've seen very polite Rocket League. It's like, hey, I cleared it away from my goal, so that means the play's over, guys, right? Like, you're not gonna try to follow up. And then once we start to see Rutgers challenge that concept, they run up the scoreboard for nothing. On the other side, RIT, I want to see them get back to what they were doing. Winterbark made magic happen earlier on by challenging things, especially at the midfield, going for those follow-ups. We just did not see him do that in that last game. And Rutgers, after they scored that first goal, they're like, all right, we have a blueprint. Like we, we know how to get these goals into the back of the net, and they're going back to that well every time. And the big thing in, in game number three is we touched on it. It really was just the clear game. I mean, it, it really doesn't feel like – Rutgers was really starving them for booze. Sure, they were maybe a little bit lower than they would have liked to have been, but it really was just positioning and getting the ball past that midfield line to force Rutgers off of your own half and let you get a good sense of where you can be on the pitch. So game number four rolls around. I just want the Tigers to clear the ball a little better. I do too. Anytime you just lightly tap it over your own backboard, Rutgers is going to be there potentially. The last game of the series for RIT. Can they force out game number five? We're about to find out. And it's also just... It, Minus the clear, which is kind of hand in hand with the point. Pass it. Right no. here, that shot is Ooh. in. Never mind, Mimic. Never mind. Don't hits, pass it. Hits the top corner, 14 seconds in, and Rochester IT are right back in it. I wanted the pass because Mimic has a guy on the opposite side of the net right there, and he just blasted it to the top right corner, but never mind. That was just enough. Well placed ball, Mimic. I take it all back. That's exactly what I was talking about, though. When a team in this series clears the ball, they act like the play's over. But the moment the other team challenges it, Mimic it sends, ball, sends the ball back to the goal. Rutgers is like, wait, you're actually firing back that quickly? Wait, what? I thought the turn was over. Well, goal number one RNT. You really thought that the pass was the way to go because I just thought they were going to be fast enough to make it back in front of the net. <laughs> and yet. And yet they weren't. On the corner, Quick Boy going to try to win one challenge, and he does. Has time to actually set up for the next challenge. It does go the way Ooh, there's the speed. of RIT. White Park is there, but no follow-up is available. So heads back the other way. Luki's always available downfield for his team. Flexmo almost finding an angle right there. Mimic cut off once by Flexmo, and now it's going to be boomed downfield by Luki. Knocked out to the side by White Park. Mimic just a little bit late. Luki to continue. White Park also really beat to that ball, but a lot of space being given here by Rutgers. And then how did the Tigers use it? They didn't dribble the ball. They kicked it right back to them, and now they're stuck in front of their own box again. It's been an, it's been an increasing, uh, increasingly common topic. You're and kidding. that one almost oh. 
paid for by Take Rochester it. IT. Take that one to the back. White Park, or White Park gets the second goal. That was going to be a sad day if they did not convert that transition goal. Just quick boy, let it go a little bit too much. Didn't jump up and tip it to the midfield line. Was willing to let it go over his head so he could get a sense of what to do with it. By then, it was too late. Rutgers just simply giving up too much of the field in transition. How many times do you come around the pitch and you're like, wow, I have the whole half of this field to try to go make a play? RIT, they're definitely going to enjoy that. Rutgers, they've got to get aggressive. And possession is something being increasingly talked about as an, almost another goal for Rochester. IT, that one just off the crossbar. Lukey back over to Flexmo. Flexmo, he's under one, carrying this. He's got Lukey on the wing. And Lukey was really doing a nice job enabling Flexmo to go for that dribble because he forced that first man to try and dodge a demo. And it's let Rutgers kind of stick here in the middle of the field and try and continue this attack and get something going with three minutes. Flexmo just off the corner, and Quick Boy was able to come in unchallenged on that one. Not the best touch from Mimic on this. Sunblaze forced up. He can't hide the ball. Mimic oh, has a free net. A weird sequence of events leads to a booming shot from midfield. Three goals up for Rochester IT. Yeah, this first challenge, you don't really see it too well on the camera. Flexmo was just trying to beat all of Rochester there because he knew that they were definitely a little bit low on boost, and he figured if I win this ball, they're going to be in a bad spot. He went for the big play. But in fact, it might have put the game out of reach. We're not even at halfway yet. Two minutes and 45 seconds to begin to turn it around. Rutgers just in an odd position. You're not there to follow up on the ball. You're not there to defend either. It's like, where were you? <laughs> They're all caught a little bit too far forward on that last one. That's for sure. But again, it really did come down to Flexmo's decisioning, decisioning, decision making. Because he has an opportunity to either go for that ball, try and make it a really tough position for Rochester, uh, Institute Tech, or just give up the ball and allow the 1v2 to happen back the other way. He tried to play the active defense out of the midfield, and it just didn't go his way. I like decisioning. Can we make that a thing? <laughs> just put it, put it on the CRL19 shirts. Decisioning. <laughs> you have poor decisioning. <laughs> I love that. I like decisionry. 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 Decisionry? The decisionry? Right. Wouldn't that be the practice of decisions? Yes. <laughs> anyway. Decisionology. <laughs> decisionology, right. Luke, you heard it here first. You Luke heard it here first. Is, is that content? Down. Is that content? Oh, Ooh. Rutgers is trying to score and <laughs> put out to the corner. Oh, and getting bumped is Flexmo. Headed down the other way. It's going to be Lukey looking for Flexmo. He's got him. A bouncer off of an orange car. And then a huge miss. Flexmo almost getting there on the challenge. Still Rutgers forced oh, to try to make a play off this ball. <laughs> Nobody was even back at net by the time this transition started. And that's three goals on the transition for Rochester IT. Yeah, and definitely Rutgers caught a little bit off guard. Flexmo, I think it was, who had the opportunity to go for that ball first, opted to let it bounce off the wall. Didn't expect Mimic to miss. And then he just tried to keep the challenge going, so it all just starts off with, with trying to let the ball travel a little too far before you try and make a play on it. But plays like that, I see why Sunblaze is out here on the roster right now. That was some of the most technically inclined play we've seen. Rutgers is going to answer back with a minute 17. Three goals down, they still have one heck of a way to go. One heck of a way to go is, a, is one way to put it, that's <laughs> for sure. But it is good to at least get one on the board and say, all right, fine. You're going to have game number four. You kind of felt like it was going to go that way anyway after that uh, that third mimic goal on the transition at about the three minute mark where they just caught got caught stretching themselves a little too thin. But other than that, it really has been Rutgers, you know, chilling on this Tigers half of the pitch. And then they get touches like that that just go into the back of the net that's beat them. Yeah, there's just, again, it, the problems persist. You said it in game one. Yeah, they, they're just all far up on in front of the attacking third thinking that these balls are going to be short there and we they go. get a second goal. And with two goals to go in less than a minute, Rutgers might make the comeback. It actually does look a little more doable than it just did because, I mean, that's a fairly quick turnaround. The last goal was at 117. This one at 53. Still not struggling to really put the ball in some tough places for the Tigers to deal with. But it's a lot to ask still. It feels doable for either side. It's just who wants to play it aggressively more consistently you're going to start to find the ball in the back of the net but 43 seconds i'm not sure there's a oh that's oh, it that's he it, it. Oh. He's, oh he just missed the touch Ooh. and it was going to be tight anyway for lukey he makes that though and they likely pull themselves within one but now flexmo the only man back has to find lukey lukey barely gets a touch onto the ball they need another boomer uh. and they need time left 
Sunblaze's touch off the ceiling, not good for RIT. What a Ugi fake. Plays it off the fake and pushed out to the side. It's boomed away again. The demo. Rochester IT have killed a ton of time. The demo oh, that opens mm. things up and Mimic puts in the dagger for Rochester IT. That demo was so big and you don't even see it because Quick Boy just had to challenge for possession. And if he lost, he needed the help. And that demo from Rochester IT, they got that long clear up the field, decided to stick with it and said, look, if you're going to make a play, do it. We don't care. We're going to make it tough on you. And they capitalized. Mimic said, game's getting pretty exciting, boys. <laughs> It'd be a Not shame. Anymore. It'd be a shame if I came through here and just secured game number five. RIT, they managed to find some form of offense. Pays off for them. 5-2, closing out game number four. Rutgers only has to make one adjustment. And they just need someone to sit at least at midfield. Just and a even, little further. Even, even then, sitting at midfield can sometimes still be too close because it's so easy to get a lot of height on that ball and a lot of speed that there's no way you can react in time unless you're trying to position yourself on the sidewall, which in in about seven times out of ten, there's no reason you should be doing that either. Right. So it's just it, it's just better defensive positioning by Rutgers. And they do that. They can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rochester IT in this series. You definitely could have wiped, you know, maybe two, maybe three, even three goals. Three, definitely three goals. Their yeah. first three, their, their, it was after their first goal, their next three were all on transition. It was a wide open net every single time. You can't, at this, even at this level, at the CRL level, you can't have this many open nets. It's ridiculous. If you're going to leave the net open, it has to be for a reason. Either you're getting a demo, you're securing a goal yourselves. Either case, if you don't do either one of those things, you're going to look on the other side of the field and be like, oh, right, we probably should have defended. So it's gone down to this. And it's gone back and forth. And the Scarlet Knights looking to start off strong Ooh. and so close. But not enough. Quick Boy delivers from the midfield line. I feel like I just got punched in the chest for Sunblaze. He almost made the save. I actually thought he initially had it off the crossbar, <laughs> but it just didn't have enough height on it. Couldn't get the power he needed. It kind of hit on the side of his car, yeah, which is exactly where it. you get no power. Quick Boy's like, uh, we take these. We take those. And oh, one boy. back. Oh, what? what? You're kidding. The, what? Bar, the post kicks off Mimics such as that was just enough to get by from Quick Boy. So wow. the Scarlet Knights hang on. <laughs> Wouldn't, aren't you glad for the post if you're Rutgers? RIT tied this up quick. You know, it may be a different oh series. Dear. That's a huge double come yeah. in. That's an easy goal for Flexmo. Rutgers take an early 2-0 lead. That is a get punished for double committing. Mimic takes himself off the line. White Bark also goes for it. Not sure who's more at fault there because I mean, while White Bark did touch it, it was never going to be a really quality touch. Maybe Mimic would have been able to get that ball somewhere out to the corner, but the double commit combined with not the best touch is a recipe for disaster. To answer that question, Chiefs, why not both? Why not I, both? I just feel, I feel like there just needs to be some steady communication. Guys, I got this ball. I'm going to go for the pass. I'm getting boost. Play wow. 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 It would have been a great idea if, the, if number three was right there for it. That right. would have been beautiful. It would have been, it would have been amazing. I don't even think number three knew that that was going to happen. <laughs> he just saw Flexmo flipping towards it. And, was able to get a solid touch. Rutgers nice. also get a third goal. Flexmo getting his second. I was about to just say, but they are under a lot of pressure for RIT, and they need to find a clear here. And Mimic, while he did get the demo, Sunblaze was not ready to have that one come out of the corner. Flexmo, that is a quality touch. This has been a seesaw battle. One minute, one team looks entirely dominant. Then in the next minute, the other team surges ahead and looks like a stronger team. Three minutes, 47 seconds to go. RIT, they still can pull this out. And you got to stop a, the bleeding right now, though. It's been an alternating series of who commits more errors on the other end. The last game, it was Rutgers being too aggressively positioned. Whoa. And in this game, it, it's Rochester RIT with too many double commits on defense and no solid clear potential, which is the struggles we saw this team have in game number three and why Rutgers were able to take series advantage after that game. Quick boy putting perhaps the finishing touches on this game. RIT, they need a goal in the next 30 seconds. If they want to have any hope, they need to get aggressive on the ball. Let's see if they do it. You're absolutely right. Mimic, he cheated up, didn't have time to grab the corner boost, and already not the strongest start for the Tigers because White Bark spawns because he just got demoed. He wanted the boost in the corner, and Flexmo said, you don't have time for that, buddy. 
And Mimic has to be able to control that on the play there. He had not not a ton of pressure right in front of his face. Went for a flick, but Flexmo had that red the whole way, and it wasn't like Mimic couldn't see Flexmo on his screen. It needs They need to take better care of the ball. Now down by five, there is more than three minutes left in this game. And Rutgers don't have a perfect defense either, so it's they're not completely out of the woods, but this is almost insurmountable, if not already for Rochester IT. And again, there's one back. Yeah, they get one back here, but this is single elimination game five. This is it for RIT. You got to start the comeback now, and if you were going to start the clock at any time, this is the perfect time to do it. That back pass really tied up all the Scarlet Knights, didn't it? <laughs> they were both in the same place. He kind of tipped it at them. It didn't look like a very hard play, but they were like, oh, he hit it to us, and then they just didn't get the good touch. And some plays is like we take those. <laughs> we haven't really we haven't really talked about it a lot in this matchup. But do you think the nerves maybe getting to getting to both of these teams because it just seems a bit uncharacteristic well, out, of, out of a lot of the teams we've seen oh. so far. But we've seen oh. you know mistakes come well, out from teams in previous conferences that have those and they talk about it's it's their mental it's a mental mistake. Well, this is literally the first time in game number five where Rochester IT haven't lost the kickoff. Like, think about that. Every single time that the kickoff has started, RIT has been put on the back in their own net from the start almost immediately. This is the first time all of game five they've been able to battle for possession. I'm glad you pointed that out because a minute ago, I saw Flexmo have time to drive up to the ball, stop, and then start to dribble at kickoff. And I was like, is RIT challenging the ball? And all like that, I, that's the first time I've seen that here this season at Ciara. Uh, and it's, it's been difficult just thinking that a teammate's going to be in an area and then they're not. And the positioning, the communication hasn't been there. This is what, just, what, what, what in the world? He uh, saved how is that it? not in? He saved it. He, I mean, he put it on a platter for the Tigers and then he pulls the ball out of the net. He's like, hang on, I can fix this. And he nailed it. There, is, there isn't an air pump strong, strong enough in the world to inflate the deflation that Rochester IT feel right now. That, that would have been a big goal. It, it had to go in for them at that point. You're talking about a, a three-goal deficit Ooh. with about with about half the game remaining. It would have been big for you. And Rutgers scores, but who cares? They were already up 5-1, 6-1. It's just, you know, it's it's extra cherries on top of your ice cream. And I know Quick Boy put that in the net, but that was all Lukey with the dagger right there. That was a great touch out of the corner. Yeah, he, he wrapped the pitch, and you can tell that the, the communication was there in time, this time. It's like, hey, I'm coming around. I'm setting you up for the easiest goal you may have ever gotten in your career. 6-1, Rutgers looking to pull it. And they just went, they totally ignored that kickoff ball up the corner. They just went to go steal the boost from RIT's corner because they know that's what RIT needs to break out of their own half after the kickoff because everyone starts with only 34 boost on the kickoff. And you don't have a lot to work with unless you go do some pathing to go and take yourself out of position to go get it. And Rutgers, are, they're just saying, cool, we're going to take all the boost because that ball's not in a position you can do anything with it. And then at that time, it's just stall the clock. And then demos as well, just kill any sort of thing RIT can get going. That one just trying to kick it away. It had no length on it whatsoever. And moving down again, Rutgers likely moving on in the tournament. The one thing I mean, the if one you thing managed you, to throw this. <laughs> the one <laughs> thing you'd really like to see out of them is they're, they're still being over. Their positioning is still overly aggressive, and it, you're not going to get that far in CRL Spring unless they can shore that up. It's, but when they are on and they're feeling each other, they look really good. This Rutgers team has some nice touches. They have some good ideas. And Flexmo, I think, has, has shown some flashy potential. But this team really needs to be disciplined on their rotations moving forward in this tournament. They've looked good. They shored a lot of things up here in game number five and took advantage of a lot of things that Rochester IT weren't able to pull together. But you want to see them continue to fire like this, heading mm. in further into the tournament. Rutgers moving on, eliminating RIT. Rutgers, first time on the stream, making it through the online qualifiers, making it past round number one here in the Eastern region. Congratulations to them. I mean to take nothing away from the success here. They were able to take down our opponents in a best of five series. But when I see what we've seen out of the West region, out of the Southern region, when I look at the, the Redlands Bulldogs, when I look at UCF, they're playing at a pace to where it's like, yeah, we won, 
But we really need to work on our fundamentals. I, I really feel like Rutgers needs to just go back to the go back to this vine, see where they can pick the pace up in certain plays, see where in certain instances their communication could be sharper, because it's only going to get more difficult from here. If they do have hopes of taking a run deep into the bracket, they have to play at a higher level than what we just saw there. But to be fair, you know, this was their first time on stream. They got that all out. We've heard it from a couple of players already that came mm -hmm. through the qualifiers. They're like, yo, the first game on stream is, is really something that you got to adjust to and get used to. So they've gotten it all out. Game five was also a blowout win. Mm -hmm. Rutgers, I think, going forward. We'll see how they keep going. I just want them to find a consistency. Let's take a look at the bracket, though. We do see Rutgers advance over RIT. They then will await the victors of Maryland Red against Drexel. But on the other side, we have some name stays here in the Eastern region, Penn State, Delaware. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Rowan University taking on Stockton, New Jersey as well. Also going to be a spicy matchup. And Rowan in Stockton, New Jersey, actually one that I really want to see how it plays out because both of those guys through the qualifiers had pretty solid runs. I believe uh, Stockton finished fourth and Rowan finished third. Either way, if it's not quite that, they were very close together towards the end. Yeah, definitely. And I'm excited to see Penn State versus Delaware. I mean, I, I want to see Penn State's new roster. I want to see how Stev fits in with this Penn State roster. And, and I want to see how Delaware's improved as well. I, I like seeing our conference teams a couple months later because a lot of them have really improved. Lucky you. Next matches <laughs> is two conference teams for last season. Lucky you. Perfect. You're in luck. We also have a tweet from you guys. Thank you so much for contributing. Let's see if I can get the name right. Yeah. You're on a roll we so far. Meet and Greek. Hey. Hi, Meet and Greek. We Time for the Eastern Conference to shine. The best teams come out of the East. All caps. Yes. I like the confidence. I want to see it. I, I mean, you know, the South region, West region, no shortage of bravado there. East just feels like the, the region is like, we just work hard. Like, we, we let our actions speak for themselves. We're not out here. We don't put sunglasses on. We just <laughs> put the ball in the back of the net. So thank you very much for the comment. I want to see it, too. I, you know, I was born in New Jersey, so all these New Jersey teams, I'm a Garden State Warrior. I want to see these guys show up. Thank you very much. Use hashtag CRL19. Let us know your questions. Send us your comments. Let us know what you're thinking. This is going to be a wild week. But uh, we're going to take a short break. Don't go anywhere. More action ahead. 